Fantastic. <laughs> it's a little bigger than I thought it was. You mean you've really never been here? No, I never had a reason to. But you own it. I own a coal mine in Germany, which I've never been to, a tin mine in Bolivia, which I've never been to, and a coffee plantation in Peru, which I hope I never have to go to. I'm being teased. Just a little. Well, I told you when you married me, I'd never known anyone rich. I mean, I knew people with money, but not rich, rich. <laughs> Sandra, you are incredible. People in love usually are. Senor de Cardi? You are Juanito. Si, Juanito. Senora de Cardi, Juanito. It's my pleasure to welcome you, senor. A wedding present from my sister. I've cut fresh flowers for you. Oh. Thank you. Juanito, the luggage, please. Si. rooms, Juanito? A lot. Well, how old is it? For my taste, too old. You have no reverence for antiquity. Look! Ernesto! Juanito, what's that noise? They are blowing down the mountain to widen the road. Ah, the construction. We've passed it on the way. 
You were traveling so fast, I hardly saw anything. <laughs> Maybe because I couldn't wait to be alone with you. <laughs> oh. Sandra, I love you. Ah, you kiss with your eyes open. I do not. I saw you. Oh, that's only Juanito. Darling, you said on our honeymoon we'd have two weeks alone. Did you mean it? I meant it. Well? But Juanito, he's half deaf, half blind, half in a world of his own. Oh, darling, I know it's foolish, and he's probably a sweet, dear old man. But I don't want anything on a honeymoon that isn't beautiful. <laughs> no, right? As you like. Juanito! Juanito! Si, senor. Do you live here all the time? No, senor. On a farm with my daughters. Oh. Would you like to sleep in your own bed? Very much, senor. Well, sleep well, old man. Gracias, senor. Adios. Adios, senora. Thank you, Ernesto. Every moment I learn more and more about you, American. What do you mean? I thought you were a practical people. But we are. Well, we will stay here two weeks. Who will run the errands? Who will cook? I told you I could cook. I toast the first of many, many talents. something for you. More champagne? No. I have something much more intoxicating. An heirloom. It belonged to my family. Oh, it's exquisite. It has my initials on it. Construction crew. They have a perfect sense of timing. I was hoping you'd think it was my kiss. Fresh air. Champagne. Did you say something, darling? More champagne. Don't 
you think you've had enough for tonight? Hmm. One more glass. <laughs> I hope they don't start blasting too early tomorrow morning. But then you'll never hear it. <laughs> yes, I think we both had enough for tonight. Say. Yes, sir. May I help you? Yes. Uh, I would like to report a disappearance. Well, it has to disappear, senor. My husband. I thought it was some kind of a joke. I kept thinking he'd be home at any minute. Your husband, is he in the habit of making jokes? I don't know. Well, he's your husband. We'd only been married that day. Can you see your passport? Yes, of course. You were married. I am. To Senor Ernesto Di Cardi. Thank you. This way. 
fire extinguisher, Sergeant, is in the broom closet. Fire extinguisher? I told you not to call me unless the building was burning down. Obviously, there is a fire. Oh, no, sir, no. It's a... Uh, a woman. Sergeant, I thought you pride yourself on your ability to handle women. Uh, yes, sir, but this is an American woman. Does she have a name? Uh, yes, sir. Miss uh, Sandra Leitan. Or Signor Picardi. I can't explain it. I woke up, and he was gone. He took nothing with him? Just the clothes on his back. His luggage hadn't even been opened. I see. It just isn't normal for a man to drive away on his wedding night. Well, uh, Mr. Riccardi is not a normal man. Just what do you mean by that? There have been, uh, in his lifetime, incidents where women are concerned. I am not a woman. I am his wife. So you said? We were married in France. I have the wedding license at the house. Uh, the villa. No, no, the castle. I'm sure you have. But we were discussing uh, your husband. Is it a crime in Spain to be wealthy? It's a crime not to be. Well, then, Inspector, I would appreciate it if you would ignore the gossip and the rumors and the vicious newspaper articles. Signora, when you married Ernesto De Cardi, how long did you know him? Three weeks. While I never had the pleasure of meeting the gentleman, even in such remote a place as Chinchon. I am not interested in his past. I am interested in where he is now. As am I. Then do something. Your first night uh, was, uh, shall we say, no cause uh, for anger or disappointment. It was not. So he did not leave angry. You drank a uh, little too much champagne, so you cannot tell me if he left alone. Inspector. Do you consider 48 hours sufficient? For what, Signora? To find my husband. Because that's how long I'll wait before going to the American Embassy. We have been in touch with uh, Signor Federico Caprio, a most respected attorney from Madrid. But what does he have to do with finding my husband? He handles all the Decardi business. Oh, well, maybe he can explain what's going on. I sincerely hope so. Will he come to see me, or should I go to see him, or what? His office said he will contact us when he arrived. Will it be long? Tomorrow, the day after, at the latest. I don't think I can stay here much longer. There are people in the village who would be more than willing to help out. No, no, it's nothing like that. It's, uh, it's the night. The wind makes strange noises and the shadows get longer and longer. Too feminine. No woman can be too feminine. Where would you go, senor? Oh, Madrid. Fly home. The all of Spain will be the loser. Inspector, I've never known any Spanish men before. Is it possible that a man like my husband, well, could, could he have regretted getting married? All men at that moment. Could it have frightened him into running away? Too many marriages like uh, Jay. But with such a charming woman, I'm sure he'll return. 
I'll never understand. In my line of work, many mysteries end up easily explained. I hope this is one of them. So do I. Are you sure? Well, perhaps to be sociable. Oh, so that. Thank you. I presume you've already had the marriage. I talked to the man who performed the ceremony and one of the witnesses. You know, it's remarkable. What is, senor? My client Ernesto. No matter when I decide to take a vacation, the man always somehow manages to ruin it. You don't seem to be too concerned about his disappearance. No, I'm not. But the sole owner of uh, such vast interest... He is Sister Carla. I had the pleasure of meeting her a few times. Um, socially. Socially? Well, I meant... Uh, not officially. Yes. Anyway, Carla owns a small part of the family fortune. But as the attorney, I really am not interested in the Decardis. As much as I'm interested in the woman. But she has not disappeared. He has. You should have said again. You see, Ernesto has been involved with many women under many circumstances. In every case, without exception, he always leaves them, usually after a few weeks. You mean he has done this vanishing act before? I said without exception. He just walks out without, without a word leaving me behind to arrange a suitable settlement. Then there is no mystery. Just one. The woman. You see, Inspector, she's the only one who ever managed to get a wedding ring from Ernesto de Gardi. She seems to be worthy of it. You think you can arrange a meeting? Oh, she wants to meet you. I have absolutely no doubt about that. Because how else is she going to get hold of any of the money? My impression of her... You don't mind, I rather form my own impression. Of course. I understand. If I can help your department, I would gladly contact Carla. Because I think she's just about the only one who knows where Nestor's hiding. I would appreciate it. It's a pleasure. According to your husband's attorney, Signor Capio, he says he can locate him through his sister. Truthfully, Inspector, I am getting so angry that I may disappear and let Ernesto find me. Please don't do it. I won't. At least not until I see that attorney and have him deliver a piece of my mind to my husband. And uh, accept a settlement, of course. Mm. Clothes, a few gifts, I'll take those. Hello? Just a minute. It's for you. It's my office. I told them I would be here. Excuse me. Yes? Ah. That is good news. We had received a call from Senorita Di Cardi. Your sister. Excellent. Excellent. I, I shall tell her. Signora, your problems are over. They are? According to the signorita, your husband will return home tonight. Why call her and not me? The way I understood it, his sister got in touch with him. It seems uh, this game your husband plays is an old hand at it. I don't understand what's going on. People of wealth, uh, Senora, 
people without a goal or ambition often amuse themselves in stage ways. Perhaps I should go with you. Inspector Roberto Sevilla of the police. Oh, my apologies, Inspector. Is anything wrong? Who are you? <laughs> you are paying me back in my own kind. I could hardly blame you. You know, Inspector, a prank I played on our wedding night. Inspector, this man is not my husband. What prank? Uh, will you listen to me? This man is an imposter. Yeah, Signora. You were saying? Oh, I could use a drink. Is, but I do know that he is not Roberto Riccardi. There seems to be a small doubt. Not in my mind. You know, I seem to have forgotten to have lunch. Inspector, please do something. I think I'll have a bite. <sighs> Darling, you are confusing the poor man. If we could all settle down for a moment and discuss this question, I'm sure that... I don't know about you, but I'm going to wash up and change. Inspector, I demand that you make him get off my property. Your property? Senor, if it wouldn't trouble you to match some identification. There is so much proof. Every one of those things could have been duplicated. Passport, the picture of his sister, the driver's license, and the car he drove back in. Oh, still here, Inspector? And here he stays until you get out. Oh, Sandra, this whole thing is beginning to annoy me. Good night, Inspector. Signora, you knew him such a short time. But I knew him well, very well. Of course. He knew where you met, where you were married, the men who presided, and the names of the witnesses. I don't care. He's a, a fraud, an imposter, a thief. But what would you want to steal? What would I want to steal, Sandra? Perhaps, Inspector, if you left me alone with my wife. Oh, yes, yes, perhaps. Oh, no, no, don't go. Don't leave me alone with him, please. Control yourself, Sandra. Your hysteria is unbecoming, particularly in front of the police. I'm warning you, I'm just holding on, just barely holding on. Please, the Signora, try to retain control. I'm afraid that my decision was right. Decision? Yes, my marriage was an impulse. I left suddenly, I admit it. But I just did it to give myself a little time to think things out. Calmly and coolly decide if a man of my type should be married. A reasonable thing to do. And the answer is, I shouldn't. Why? My sister says that our attorney's in town. At the inn. <laughs> oh, he'll be livid. But he usually is. Well, I'm going to spend the night with Cabrio. This will probably be a most difficult settlement, but I do want to be fair. As you will. Good night, Inspector. He's mad. The man is absolutely mad. Or do you think I'm mad? Signora, at the moment it is my own sanity which is in doubt. But I told you the truth. I really want to ask the police want the truth. I don't know what game he's playing, but I never saw that man before tonight. Well, 
We shall have most of the answers by tomorrow. We shall? Tonight, he must face his attorney, and tomorrow, his sister. Of course. <sighs> Meanwhile, I have a long night ahead. I could send up a woman from the village, a cousin of mine. You could do something even nicer, if it's not too much trouble. Oh, well, anything. Invite me to dinner. Ah, oh, Signore. I would be honored. Maybe I was tired of being careful. Sandra, you are speaking in riddles again. <laughs> I was engaged twice before. Once when I was in college and... and once... Did I tell you I worked in Washington, D.C. for a time? Yes. Well, fortunately, I discovered the kind of men they were before I was in too deep. And yet, in uh, just under three weeks, you married Ernesto de Cardi. You never met Ernesto de Cardi, did you? No. Not until tonight. You never met Ernesto de Cardi? Oh. Again? I've upset you with my blundering tongue. <clears throat> when American girls dream of marrying a prince, he looks like Ernesto de Cardi. Charming, wealthy, a touch of royalty. Completely overwhelming. Yet uh, his reputation. Oh, I didn't believe anything. True or false, earned or not, it is a matter of public print. It's part of the jet set routine. Frankly, they bored me. Not that they went out of their way to ask my opinion. <laughs> Regard me as a friend. You're the only one I have in this old country. Then we can't keep ignoring what's between us. What do you mean? Your husband disappears. A man who says he's your husband appears. And we haven't mentioned it all night. I've been trying to forget it. That won't make it go away. When I was a little girl, my father used to put me in a closet and lock the door. No matter how much I cried or how hard I pounded, he kept me in that closet. And that's just how I feel now. Only I don't know what I've done. I don't know why he's doing this to me. Sandra, don't. I'm sorry, Roberto. I must have sounded... Paranoid. You sounded like someone badly in need of rest. I haven't slept. I, I can't. The room seems to close in on me. Do you have anything to take? Uh, yes. One way or another, tomorrow is going to be a difficult day. And I can't help you. It would be inappropriate for me to be there. But if the lawyer unmasks him... Sandra, you didn't marry a Prince Charming. You married Ernesto de Carden. And tomorrow, they're going to try and buy you off. He must pay. He must pay. I will not. You want my best layer. Hey, that's grown, is it? All right, all right. I would like to know the facts. He's not kill my chicken. The dog was in bed, sleeping with me. You should have seen the dog, Sergeant. 
It is the only one that's in done with feathers. Settler. Be thirty pesetas. And the split a bottle of wine with the money. I have something to show you. Bring it in here. Manufacturer guarantees it. With only one police car, what do we need with the siren? A red light flashes on the roof, and the siren is operated by one small button on the dashboard. See for yourself. All right, Carlos. Uh, inspector, you yourself so I said all right, Carlos. But Nathan, I think my client has made concessions enough. My name is Mrs. Ernesto de Cardi. But I'm not denying that. And that man is not my husband. That poses a different problem for he is Ernesto de Cardi. I don't care how many times you repeat that, it's still a lie. Senor, I don't care what you're saying as long as you stop being reasonable. Federico, stop being an attorney. Just ask how much. Ernesto, you're not helping at all. Senor, I, I think I understand you perfectly. And Esther's really not the man that people think he is. Not interested in him. Finally, you're showing some taste. Certainly more than you did when you married him. That wasn't necessary, Federico. And Esther, you get yourself into this. Do you think you can get yourself out? Probably not. Definitely not. Why don't you tell me what you want and then please go? Sandra, I do wish you would stop ordering me off my own estate. Senora, I assure you that arranging an annulment is going to be the best decision that you can make. This whole conversation is pointless. I don't consider the amount of $25,000 exactly pointless. And this house? <laughs> Won't Carla raise the roof when she finds up giving it away? <laughs> Senor Capio, I intend getting my own attorney. That is your prerogative to ask him what criminal charges can be brought against you and that imposter. It wasn't wise to say that. What else could I do? Well, in the prestige of the car, this vast strength of the Senor Gabriel, you're taking on a formidable assignment. It was an empty threat. I, I don't know any lawyer. You're the only one I know I can come to. And I seem to be helpless. There must be someone who can identify him. There is. Senor Capri. But he's in on it. In on what? I don't know. Unless it has something to do with the money. Money is too often the basic reason for a crime, but uh, you have none. So what do they have to gain? The Cardi money? Well, you already have that. In fact, uh, they seem to want to give a good bit to you. I remember. There was an old man, uh, a servant, named Juanito. He was there at the house when we arrived. Sandra, his sister arrives tomorrow. I don't want to wait until tomorrow. I want to settle it now. Is he not here? I hope he brought that attorney. He did. you have for me? Senor Di Cardi! Have you eaten, old man? No, senor. I've just been waiting for you. He can't recognize him. The poor old man's eyesight is bad. 
Inspector, how, how long do I have to go through this? He's half deaf and half blind. Ernesto told me. So I did. Not you. It's the real Ernesto. Inspector, this woman is mad. I hope that this satisfied you. Tomorrow, it will be said that once and for all. You mean I have to leave my own house again? But why tomorrow? I took the liberty of requesting the presence of Signorita De Cardi. She arrives tomorrow. <laughs> You've got a treat coming, Sandra. She's as charming as a cobra and just as vicious. A confirmed spinster, 24. Is there anything else, Inspector? I have up a man to stay. After all, a man has a right to the pleasures of his wife. Ernesto, do me a favor and stop making things worse than they are. I'm warning you, my dear wife, next time I come here. I come to stay. Stop pushing her! She's doing the pushing, not me. Carla will settle everything when she comes tomorrow. We'll be lucky to get rid of her. Lucky. Adios, Juanito. Adios, Senor de Gardi. Senora. I think you will do best not to anger him any further. I don't care about him and I don't care about you! That woman is mad, Inspector. Very mad, I'm sorry. Juanito, I drive you home. Si, si. My old father. I should have remembered about the old man. I have to drive him home. Roberto. Have you ever seen Ernesto's sister? Oh, many, many times. She's been coming down for more than seven years. Well, then I think we've seen the last of Senor Caprio and the phony Ernesto. How can you be so sure? Because they'll have to leave before the arrival of the real Carlos de Cardi. Three of my plans died from nothing but that infernal blasting. You say something, Inspector? No, nothing, nothing. Finish what you're doing. Do you know what I think, Inspector? Constantly. The American woman denies he is Ernesto. The lawyer insists he is. What motive could she have? What motive could they have? And uh, if she is right, who is this Ernesto? Hmm? But uh, on the other hand, do we know for sure that she is the real wife? The lawyer has not denied it. Carlos, I am confused enough without your help. Finished. I still think it was unnecessary. All the cars in Madrid have them. They command respect. This is not Madrid. And the uniform commands all the respect we need. <laughs> Should I try it for you? Why? To drown out the blasting? Or to scare half of the town to death? Senorita De Cardi, how nice to see you again. Inspector. Uh, do you care to go to my office? Well, thank you. I've been on the road for five and a half hours, and I'm so dry and thirsty. May I buy you a drink? With pleasure. <laughs> well... <laughs> <laughs> Ah, my apologies.
apologies, Senorita. Calm down, Inspector. You won't be held to fault. Naturally not. Senorita, the lady with the white dress. Strange. She's not the usual type. Senora De Cardi. Senorita De Cardi. I'm very happy to meet you. Won't you have a drink? Uh, no, thank you. Oh, really? Uh, I can't quite see Ernesto marrying a woman that doesn't drink. <laughs> well, I, I do drink, but it's a little early. Um. Well, a few ladies would like to get acquainted. I mean, I could sit somewhere else. Oh, no, please. I understand my brother married you. Yes. But why on earth did you marry him? Because I'm in love with him. Yes, of course. I always forget how easily women fall in love with my brother. And how easily they learn to hate him, too. I didn't think I'd have to defend him to his own sister. Uh, my dear... Sandra. Uh, long ago, I gave up both defending and apologizing for an accident. But why is it necessary? Well, you see, my brother has very peculiar ways in which he is inclined to express his love for women. Men have been known to change. But not Ernesto. My advice is, is that you take what's offered to you and forget all about him. Didn't you explain... Oh, um, That Ernesto isn't Ernesto? Really? It's then you Caprio has identified my brother. They're in something together. I just know they are. I can't see why anyone would want to impersonate Ernesto. But, uh... If such a thing were possible... I'd certainly want to know why, wouldn't you? They both showed up. Hello, Sandra, darling. So good to see you, love. I'm you and your charm, remember? Come now, don't be angry. It's been difficult enough. Who's made it so difficult, Ernesto? Darling, please don't upset him. He's listening to reason, man. Couldn't you have settled all of this without me? Because why? Why? Myers! She's in it with them. I, I, I tell you, she is. Sandra, you can't look for conspiracies everywhere. Oh, I'm sorry. It sounds paranoid, doesn't it? They have you convinced that I'm mad. Sandra, if I were convinced of that, I wouldn't be here. Why have you stuck with me, Roberto? Perhaps it is my fortune to love women I shouldn't. In your case, uh, another man's wife. Do you think I could still love him? I don't know. He walked out on me. For all I know, he could be a part of this. I'm sorry I said that. It even sounds crazy to me. But, Sandra, am I completely blind? No. No, am I blind? Or mad? Or suffering from amnesia? But I am very confused. And very frightened. You are the most outrageous people I have ever met. What do you mean by coming here with all these things? But, my dear Sandra, we must be civilized. Even at the most disagreeable moment. Now that you've joined us, why don't we come to the point of this meeting? I've tried to simplify this. 
You agree to an annulment. You will get $25,000 and the mansion. Now, listen, I really see no necessity to give her the house. Oh, I don't use it anyway. You don't, I'm afraid I do. Perfectly legal. Now, please be reasonable. We ought to let her stay married. It's a good idea. Perhaps you could change me, Sandra. All right. $50,000 plus the house. That is my final offer. And if I refuse? You have two choices. Either you take what's offered to you and forget all about him. Or what? Or we shall have you committed to an asylum where you shall stay for the rest of your life. Do you really think you can frighten me with that threat? He doesn't make idle threats, my love. Senora, you have denied the existence of a man who was identified by his lifelong friend and his sister. Because it's true! Miss Latham, Mrs. DiCardi. You are a stranger to this part of the world. And don't you realize that the influence of Senor Caprio and myself would be absolutely insurmountable? What a shame for someone as lovely as you are to be locked away. But you're all bluffing. No, we're quite serious. Committing an American citizen will not be that simple. Federico, do you think it can be done quietly? Oh, yes. yes. Oh, oh, no, it can't. Because I won't let it. I'll make trouble. I'll make a lot of trouble. All I want is the truth. Why won't you tell me the truth? Come on, let's tell her. You shut up. Be quiet now. What can she do? Unless I'm warning you. Don't. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Antonio Avila. Where's Ernesto? Hiding, someplace. As usual. A few years ago, Ernesto injured a young woman quite seriously. Her brothers wanted blood with their money. So we hired him. Strangely enough, that's the only bidding I've had to take, although I've posed uh, as Ernesto several times. And been very well paid for it, I may add. But where is Ernesto? I want to talk to him. Adam, if it were that simple, do you think we would go through the charade? Rio, Paris, London, New York. He's hiding, and he'll stay hidden until we've cleaned things up for him. No. No, he'll come back to me. No, he won't. You see, he's very compulsive, and he follows an identical pattern with his women. The courtship, the flowers, the speeches, the locket. I assume he also gave you the family heirloom. Yes. Well, you deserved it. At least he married you. Oh, you don't know how many women are going around Europe with the locket. Senora, let me be practical for a moment. If you don't sign, you won't get anything. Not even food allowance. Well, how does he live? He charges everything as long as I permit him. So you see, you really have no alternative. Please, don't force our hands anymore. Federico, I've decided to keep the house, and that's absolutely fine. But, dear... I'm sorry, it's fine. We will see you at the house at 10. Be packed and ready to leave. <laughs> accepted their offer. It was most generous. Signora. I still intend to be fair. I will draw up a new document. And I'm sure that the figure of $75,000 will more than pay for a two-week marriage. She also agrees not to sell the story to any newspapers or magazines or book publishers. You're incredible. You know, I never would have thought of that. That's precisely why I do the thinking. I must say that Antonio is beginning to do a little thinking on his own. Yes. But we'll simply get someone else to impersonate Ernesto. How are you going to keep him quiet? 
He has a criminal record. I have both knowledge and proof of a crime that he committed that could send him away for life. By the way, you're very beautiful. Federico, if I didn't love you, I would find you quite detestable. Oh. Inspector, do you consider 48 hours sufficient? Ernesto has been involved with many women under many circumstances. In every case, without exception, he always leaves them. There was an old man, uh, a servant, named Juanito. Is this the surprise you have for me? Signor Nicardi! They'll have to leave before the arrival of the real Carlos Nicardi. I'm immune to your charm, remember? Liars! 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 change. There are too many noises in my head for me to enjoy it. Inspector, if I may say... Say? What's in your mind? Uh, for a policeman to get involved, no matter how slightly... And you're right. I want to believe her. She's an American, different than a Spanish woman. She is distraught. She marries a stranger who disappears. And when he returns, he is more a stranger than ever. Can people really make such a mistake? <laughs> Why not? How many times have you said, that man looks like... or in a lineup? People identify the wrong person. Too often. To some, all roses look alike. That's true. To my sister, for instance, all American cars look alike. To me, all airplanes look alike. So you see, it is possible. Sister? Which sister? The sister you were just talking about. Uh, oh, her. Uh, I said to her, all American cars look alike. The man didn't come at all. He came in a car. You? Tell me again. One of the construction workers found it. When? Uh, I don't remember. You'd better. I need some time to think. Mr. Carey, I think you've had enough time to think now. Why are you doing this? Obviously to protect the Ducati interests. And reputation. No, there's more. I assure you... Federico will be here for days unless she gets the truth. Antonio, I think you've said enough. I want the truth. The truth is quite simple, Sandra. A lady friend or angry husband can be bought off. But a wife? She could ask questions. Like asking for an audit. Or demanding an accounting of all the funds that have been spent over the past 
ten years. Senora, I can assure you I have done absolutely nothing illegal. I told you we should have had her committed. It isn't too late for that. Don't lean too hard on them, son. They have a great deal to lose. I just bet they have. Caprio will have to go back to his fat wife. And Carlo won't have enough left to buy a derelict. Let alone a first-rate attorney as a lover. You're no better than your brother. Love and money comes in the same package. That'll be enough! And don't let him bait you. You have infinitely more important things to settle than this. Me. Right. You know, Mr. Stacardi? Is the contract 75,000 American dollars to be deposited in a Swiss bank? Sign it. If I do, I have no claim to Ernesto's name. That's right. Or to his estate. Correct. be more concerned about my patients. The game is over. Or should I say, it's my deal. What do you mean, it's your deal? This paper you wanted me to sign, it's worthless. Oh, come on. Not even he could steal the whole Cardi fortune. You shut up! What is your confidence based upon, Mrs. Cardi? Ernesto Cardi. The real one, the one I married, is dead. <laughs> you know, you're mad. You're really mad. And Esther DeCardi is off hiding. He's hiding in hell. Oh, no, no. I can't believe it. I don't believe it. I don't believe my brother's dead. You're going to cry, Carla. Oh, you. Well, let her talk. If you want to, I'll show you exactly where the body is. Oh. Oh, she's lying. Look at her. Quiet. Make her admit she's lying. You can see that she's lying. Senora? You see, I killed him. I spent a full year and a great deal of money, compiling a dossier in your brother. His background, wealth, habits. Incidentally, Carla, he's much more despicable than you ever imagined. So, of course, I was well aware of his sudden disappearances after every romance. It took me a long time before I realized how important that was to my plan. As a matter of fact, it was that habit which decided me in favor of Ernesto. And getting him was almost ridiculously easy. The word no was so completely foreign to him. His pride was so thin and his vanity so deep that he just had to have what I wouldn't give him. Unless, of course, he 
he was willing to marry me. He married me. And probably would have stayed with me for well, two or three weeks. If I may be forgiven a touch of ego, I would prefer to think three weeks. However, I had a plan that couldn't wait that long. Your brother drank more than any man I have ever seen. However, the last bottle was heavily drugged. What I used barely altered the taste and disappears from the bloodstream almost immediately. Dressing him was much simpler than getting him down those stairs. However, when one needs the strength, one finds it. alcohol in the system, a driving accident couldn't be questioned. I thought it would never reach the bottom. I expected it. Terrible crashing sound, but it never came. It was as though it had to hit and sunk. I walked back and went to sleep. I slept, incidentally. Very well. The perfect murder, Sandra. Ernesto is dead. And buried. Not exactly a Christian burial, but at least he went to heaven in a Rolls Royce. My congratulations. Will you stop complimenting her and realize that she has murdered him? Don't get conscious stricken, Federico. We never had the courage to think of it, at least out loud. How can you possibly say such a thing? We did this thing for money. Yes. Actually, I thought the car and body would be found the next day. I hadn't counted on all those tons and tons of dirt being dumped on it. I'm so sorry your plans were upset. Not too badly. I can still become the administrator of the estate as soon as I want to. But I have the power of attorney from a dead man. Now, as his wife. How can you talk about money with my brother lying dead? But my dear Carla, dead or alive, all Ernesto is to us is money. Not to me. She confessed to it, Federico, and I want to see her hang for it. I'm sorry, my dear, but I don't think that's going to be quite that easy. Mm-hmm. The lawyer's mind is working. She confessed, Federico. She even told us where the body is hidden. I, for one, want to know why she told us. I think Senor Caprio has almost all of it figured out. Hmm. I reported my husband missing. A man shows up whom I deny is my husband. His lawyer insists he is my husband. My poor beloved sister insists he is my husband. What now, if the body does show up? What answers will you give about supplying the second Ernesto? How can you convince them that you didn't have to come up with the other one since you had killed the first one? Nobody, nobody would believe that. My dear Carla, the things that you have said about your brother, they would believe anything. Not murder. Including murder. Oh, wait a minute. This is not what I was hired for. Not to be hanged for a crime I didn't commit. 
I'm going to call the police and tell them everything. Be quiet and don't open your mouth again. Our visit must have come as a shock to you. I was so busy keeping track of the real Ernesto, I didn't look back. So I didn't know about you. Start talking a deal, attorney. You took advantage of everything, didn't you? Mm-hmm. And everything worked out to your advantage. Mm-hmm. You're as bad as she is. <laughs> Carla, I'm afraid we're all as bad as she is. Except maybe not quite as clever. Thank you, senor. There's much in you I admire. <laughs> How much is that flattery going to cost me? One million dollars. Oh, ridiculous. Tell her it's absolutely ridiculous. You surely had a short period of mourning. It's a bit high. Uh-oh. I told you I had a complete dossier on the Ducati interest. As of last October, the net worth was in excess of $20 million. It's pretty close. From my side of the room, I'm sacrificing much more than I'm receiving. Yes. But, Senora, you're avoiding a long civil suit to free the money. That's the outside chance that we may prove ourselves to be innocent. Can we? Do you want to take that chance? I don't. And I won't. Maybe you're not quite the fool I took you for. There's much to be discovered. With a million dollars, much to be enjoyed. Oh, this one's passing his speed, isn't it? I'll agree with you on that. And then, Senora, there's the police and the lieutenant whom you tried to convince so hard that he is not really Ernesto. The man's in love with me. Men who love you don't live very long, do they? <laughs> I believe I'd withdraw my offer. Oh, I have a story, complete with tears, that he'll believe until his dying day. You could use a different expression. <laughs> I'll call your office in Madrid. Wasn't there an easier way? If there was, I'd have thought of it. I'm sure you would. I should never have doubted you. Not for a moment. I don't understand. Well, I should have known you were telling the truth. Roberto, will you please tell me what's going on? A. Ernesto is an imposter. B. Both the attorney and the sister are in on it. C. I can prove it. Don't. People will only say you've gone mad. Oh. <laughs> Not when they see this. For days, I was staring at it, and I never seen it. You're only confusing me more. 
You better sit down. No, a drink. When you hear what I have to tell you, you may need it. There's some champagne in the refrigerator behind the screen. It was found at the factory site by workmen. I gave it to my sergeant the morning after you arrived. So? Don't you understand? There were two Ernestos and two Rolls Royces. If that's true. May I? Two Ernestos. Two Rolls Royce. Sandra, the Ernesto de Cardi, the one you married, did you love her? I'm no longer sure. If you walked in now, just this moment, would you love him? No. Not after what he did to me. What has that got to do with this? I'm afraid your husband is dead. How can you tell? How can you be sure? Those three, they know it. But they have to keep him alive in order to keep control of the estate. So they provide a second one. Unfortunately, you aren't fooled. No, I wasn't fooled. The way I see it, you must have driven over the ravine. Remember? You said that you had both been drinking a good deal. Yes, we were. At night, on a road I was not familiar with, uh, half drunk, it's a sharp turn and a 200 foot drop. It's so hard for me to understand. I mean, walking out on me, I could understand that. But dead. It's been a difficult week. So much has happened. In that week, under your tons of dirt, I covered the girl. Oh, oh. Oh, no, it's shaky. They pick it up. It takes a month, two months. But if you already know the truth, I intend to prove you innocent. To prove that the story of you being mad is the very essence of madness itself. I'm so lucky to have found you, Roberto. No, son. The luck is on mine. Oh. <laughs> oh, my sergeant. You must think I'm a madman. I ran out of the office, laughing and yelling at the same time. They are all guilty. All guilty. <laughs> oh, what a way for a policeman to act. Did you tell him you were coming here? No. Let him relax tonight. Then tomorrow morning, I put him in charge of the digging. Yeah. 
is it, Paul, my dear? No. If you would permit me, when you are mourning in this room, I could not have drunk that much. Finish your glass, and we'll talk about it. I will. over into the ravine. Come here, Sandra. You don't understand. You never understand. You've never understood. What don't I understand? I was just using you like you've used me. Like you've always used me. We'll talk about it later. If I had the money, then nobody could use me. Nobody could use me ever. Nobody could touch me. Please, Sandra, for me. No, no, not for you. 
Why always for you? Why not for me? It's always for you. Take my hand. No. No. I'm not going to go with you. You're going to lock me in the closet. I know it. screaming at what she said. It did not make any sense. It did to her. Then she is mad. Probably. She has been for a long time. Can she be cured? Maybe. But then she would have to live uh, with what she has done. 